Take it from me, I'm living it. Every time you go through hard times, man, please get, get the revelation here. It's not just a sermon. It's not just to hear it with your ears. A lot of the stuff that I say, when it comes to God, it has to do with relationship. And it has to do with walking it out. Right? I can tell you about a baseball game. Right? But when you get into the baseball game and you're in there and you're trying to catch the ball and you're throwing the ball and you're pitching and you're batting and all of that, it's a different life. It's a, it's different. It's different. I can tell you about the game, but when you're walking it out, it's different. So with that said, I want to let you know that God, every time you're going through hard times, it's a promotion for you to go through hard times. You have to look at it as beneficial. You have to look at it as exciting. You have to look at it like... But one of the things you have to do is you have to trust in God. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. I want you and I know and I know and I know the pressure. I do. I live it. I understand. But a lot of it is perception and perspective. When you pray to God and you ask God, like, to help you in terms of your mentality, in terms of your perception, perspective, in terms of opening up roads and opportunities, not just to remove the mountain, but you, you ask God to help you within the challenge, within the turmoil, within the grief, within the darkness, within the storm. You, you invite God to help you in that place, to position your heart, your mind, your, your, your steps, to order your steps. When you ask God... To intervene into you. And then furthermore. You say God help me to have the right heart. The right mindset. You know in this in this test right. But then furthermore. Right. Following him is another thing. So when God begins to move on behalf of your prayer. Follow. Don't harden your heart the Bible says. You know when God moves. Don't harden your heart. Don't get all upset. You know. Like. The only reason I'm able to tell you all of this. Is. And, and this is going to. You know, help a lot of people out there. I believe that in making mistakes, you come back bigger, stronger, and better. There's two types of people out there. That there's the people that make mistakes and they have a dull mindset. If they're doing drugs and and, and alcohol and this and that, it's hard to bounce back from a mistake because you're in a cycle of sin and and, and a lot of time you're stubborn and hard headed and pride doesn't allow you to see. That you're even in the wrong. But for the people that are walking the walk of God of faith, right? And you're trying, genuinely trying to get yourself closer to God. But you're falling, you're stumbling, you're sinning here and there and this and that. I really want to tell you this. God uses all of that mistakes to mold you and shape you stronger and bigger and better than you will ever be without the mistakes. And I'm not telling you... To go and make more mistakes. because, But I am telling you. And I'm pretty sure there's a verse in the Bible that applies to this. It's like. You know we heard of. Where sin abounds. Grace abounds more right. But we've well, we know. That you know. I just know my personal experiences. And, and, and in my experiences. What I have seen is. When I have fallen short. When I have made my mistakes and I have grieved the Holy Spirit, when I have uh, made a fool out of myself, usually there's a humbling that comes with that. There's a, I, I get broken down. I feel bad about it. But when I get built back up after that season, it, the period comes and then I turn the page and I, and I decide, okay, enough. I'm going to do better. And I, I start to implement different you know, lifestyle settings for myself to say, okay, I'm not going back to that, right? Pornography being one of the, the things I used to struggle with. Um, I just want to let people know that the journey with God, there's hiccups and speed bumps and there's working it out and there's like frustration and getting upset and this and that. I've gone through all of that that I just mentioned. And in all of those seasons, it's led me to this place where I'm at right now. Where all my mistakes are now acting as guardrails to keep me on the straight and narrow road. Because I know where it leads me if I go on that side, right? So, you've heard of the saying, curiosity killed the cat? Well, it's curiosity that gets kids to try drugs and alcohol and this and that. But once they try it, if they ever get out of it, 
you can never tempt them to be curious ever again because they've seen the devil in the drug and um, anybody that's done it for for years knows what i mean it's it's a it's a lifestyle that sucks everything out of you and it leaves you bone dry and um it's really bad so all of that has not played a role in my life to really edify me and really bring humility out of me and humbleness and i'm not advocating for sin at all i'm very much against it but i am saying that if you find yourself in a life right now that you want to get better but you find yourself behind the eight ball and you're not where you want to be i'm trying to tell you something god's going to use it all he's using it all and these are the requirements and the conditions that he will use it all one that you never give up on god he won't give up on you, but don't give up on him. Don't turn your back on him. Don't walk away from him. That's one requirement and a condition that that it, it should not be optional. You can't give up because the only way you can lose in the faith is by giving up. You already have a victory with God. So there is no, there is nothing that you can do to be defeated. There's failures, but you can't be defeated. Jesus won the victory already. The only way that you can be defeated is by walking away from Christ. By being deceived into the lie of the devil that says that the world is better than God. And by doing that, you have forsaken your first love. You've forsaken God. Right? And uh, if, if, if you return, he'll take you back. But it's serious. It's really, real, real serious um, that we understand the ins and the outs of everything and that we don't just smooth over it like icing on a cake. And we say, well, I'll be forgiven, so I'm going to be okay. That's the icing on the cake that's really, really dangerous. You have to get inside and really get to know the scenery and understand what people are saying when they say it so that you have a relationship with God. And based off of that relationship with God, you understand that you and Him, it's about Him knowing you and you knowing Him. And so then He then He stands up for you because you, He knows you, right? Like, it's a, it's a battle, a lot of it. You battle, you battle against uh, the spiritual warfare that doesn't want you to get closer to Him. But as you do that, God sees your heart and wanting to get closer to Him and then He moves closer to you. And so what comes out of that is like trust, obedience. It, it, what comes with that is sonship, right? The kingdom, um, daughter or son of God. It's, it's different. It's so different than just a person that, that goes to church on Sundays or whatever. Like we have to really get to, to, to the understanding of knowing him the only way that you can do this is by canceling out and denying the things that deny Christ deny those things that take your time away from him stand up for him he'll stand up for you do that repeatedly until you start to see accumulation and momentum and you will start seeing the fruit and you will see that the dew of God, the oil of God, the love of God, the supernatural, the blessings start to flow. But like, let's not put the icing on the cake and just move that over as a lifestyle. Let's understand what I'm talking about in the inside. And what that, re what that means is that you go through peaks and valleys. You go through testing and trials. And, um, and it's all to shape you and mold you in the image of God, Jesus Christ. But ultimately, he's trying to usher you into a place with his heart inside covenant with himself. Come close, come close. Because there's so much going on out there. Come close, come close. And you get closer to God, closer to God. As you're going through hardship, as you're going, you worship him. Why? Because you're in this world, but you're not of this world. You understand that everything in this world is going to decay, rot, die. It's all temporary. It's all going to expire. 
So don't build treasure here on earth. It's like to fall in love with the things here on earth is as soon as it's taken from you, as soon as that, then there goes your attitude. That it starts to spring up and say, oh, I really like that boat. Oh, I really like that, you know, whatever. And it's like, it's not bad to have nice things. But if you have to let it go from one moment to another, let it be. Just let it go. Because you know it wasn't yours to begin with. Everything here is rented to everybody. So hopefully you're getting something out of this video. What I'm trying to say is, is that I have faced myself. Um, I'll bring you in on my life. A lot of you know, because a lot of you have helped me financially. A lot of you have helped me. And I thank God for you. And... I have been facing a financial hardship behind the scenes. And today, I felt really, really bad because my wife homeschools and I'm the one that goes to work. And I'll just tell you the story really quick. She made $20 off of teaching English to a, a woman that she just came from another country and she was teaching her English and she gave her $20 for an hour's worth of teaching her. And today I didn't have food to eat. And I didn't have money to buy food. And I had to take my wife's $20. That made me feel so down, 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 down. I felt so, like, a, like so sad. And I was in a very low place. But guess what? At the same time, I was simultaneously... This, you can only do this. This is not a... Okay, how do I put this? You work to get here. It's not, you don't, you don't get here overnight. But over a period of time, you get to know God. And you get to understand life. You get to understand things. I've been rejected more times than I've been accepted in my life. So I know what it's like to be rejected. Much more than what I know what it's like to be accepted. But I applied for a loan. And I just remember me praying to God and I just said, God, you know, I feel so bad about this. This that just happened with my wife and I, I just, I really need to be accepted, you know, instead of rejected, you know. I trust you. I love you. It doesn't matter what happens here. I'm yours. You know, Apostle Paul says, I know what it's like to abound and I know what it's like to lack, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so with that heart and that mind, I was approaching God and I was saying, you know, God, it's not about things and material. It's not about having an abundance. But I, I do need certain things to, to survive. And I do want to supply for my children and my wife. And I really need help. And so I was pouring my heart out to God. And then simultaneously, I was um, applying for a loan. And then in doing so... Um, I submitted and I felt like God said, you know, everything's going to be okay. And he was just kind of assuring me. He's like, he told me, I felt like what God told me was, he said, you know, this test, I'm really probing your heart through it all. I'm looking at your heart. I'm seeing where you're going to run to. Where, Where is your help going to come from? Where are you going to run to? And you know what? I keep seeing you run to me. I keep seeing you run to me. You trust me. So, I had a moment here right now with God where I felt His presence come upon me when I said that. So, in the test, He probed your heart. And according to what you do, that's where your treasure in your heart is. And so, it's like where, where you run to, it's like that's where your trust comes from. It's like, where are you going to go? 
So I put my, my eggs in God's basket. And I asked for leadership. I asked for, for wisdom and understanding and lead me and this and that. And I fell upon this like loan, um, this place that gives loans. And I was sitting on it and I wasn't jumping on it for a couple of days. And then from one moment to another, I was inspired. Let me just take a swing at it. What's the worst that could happen? Yesterday, I was rejected for a credit card. And I felt that rejection sting all over again. Hopefully, this helps somebody out there that's being rejected a lot and a lot and a lot. Like, you're not alone. But the fact of the matter is, is that I don't get mad at God. I don't... I don't look at God, I, I'm not a victim, first of all, and I'm not looking at God like he's the cause, why he doesn't move. The The, the relationship with me and God is not contingent, or the, the strings here is not, if I have a good day, then God is good. If I have a bad day, then God's bad. It's not, that's like super, super childish and immature, and it's damn, it's wrong to have that mentality. That relationship can't last if that's your mindset. So God is good all the time because even if things are going that are wrong, He's going to turn it around for good. Romans eight twenty eight says. So what I'm gonna end this video by saying is is that I got approved for the loan and I was able to pay back my brother, my aunt, and pay rent you know like wow you know so it's such a relief and i was just praising god and praising god and just giving god thanks and i was just like finding myself in a place of gratitude and understanding that in it all in the scope of all things like god meets my needs he meets my needs and there's a saying that says, when you're down to nothing, God is up to something. And it is true. And uh, you'll be squeezed, but you won't be crushed. You know, the, the, the trials of the righteous are many, but God delivers them out of them all. And these are verses in the Bible I stand on, you know. So remember, Christianity is like, your faith is going to get built stronger through trials or the opposite. You're going to stray away. Let it push you towards God and not push you away. Let this, the winds of the storm be pushing you like a sailboat towards God's heart. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I suffer with God. And I don't give what I want. It's not about me. My attitude is, you know... Praying for other people, blessing other people, helping other people, blessing God. God, what do you want me to do with this money? You know, I asked this to God as soon as I got it. It's not about me, right? And um, that's, that's true faith. That's true, genuine walking in the light with God. That's not religion. That's Jesus. That's you and Jesus walking together, side by side. And uh, I wanted to share. I wanted to share that so that people could understand that as you go through your journey, that the Bible says, don't count it strange that you're going through a lot of hard stuff. This is to test your faith. And then when you go through enough of it, your test will be refined and it will come back at more valuable than gold. So it's beautiful. It's a good thing that you go through these things. It refines you. Well, with all that said, I'm going to let you guys go. Hopefully, you're blessed today. Just trust in God. Truly, truly, truly come closer to Him. He is good.